Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy G and yes, I am now gluten and lactose intolerant. Now what happens if I have either or? Well, I'm extremely bloated, my stomach hurts, very gassy, and I spend most of my day in the bathroom. So today I'm gonna take you through the foods that I've been eating as well as quickly talk about some of the things that have changed in my diet. But first, what do you say we get a quick physique update being that the last time you guys probably saw my physique, I was at my peak 225. Listen, I know we still have a long way to go, but hey, it's not that bad. Right, Ronnie? Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. So while we wait, this little speaker right here, I think my girlfriend got it as a gift. Honestly, it's like the best thing ever for when you're cooking. You just wanna jam out. The moment of truth, all right? This is the absolute most nerve wracking part of making an omelet is the actual flip because Eight times out of 10, I usually mess it up and that's like making scrambled eggs. So why go through all this trouble if you could have just made scrambled eggs from the beginning? So here we go, wish me luck. Ah! Oh! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, now that is how you make an omelet or at least I like to think so. So what I've been doing for the first four to six hours of my morning is I typically fast. Now I just kind of want to get myself ready, especially as we get deeper into the prep and we're not consuming as much calories. But honestly, I have clients first thing in the morning and the last thing I want to think about is prepping and making food, especially coming off a year long bulk when all I did was think about food all day long. Now I'm not gonna lie, I prefer eating bigger meals less often compared to someone eating more frequent meals in smaller portions. That's just my choice, that's the way I enjoy it. Now, I am still eating about 3,000 calories. That is where my current cut is at, and we're losing weight nice and slowly, which is the goal when you're trying to maintain as much muscle as possible. I'll put the macros above of what my calories look like, but as you guys see here, we have an omelet. I typically have eggs, potatoes, and toast, and obviously gluten-free bread now, but it's not that bad. It's just that the texture is just so soft. So before we get started with the best part of the day, I wanna give you guys a quick little taste test. And I'm gonna guess it's looking a little juicy because of the turkey and tomatoes. Damn, but that's just so good. As you can see, we're saving most of our carbs for the rest of the day. Ah, here we go. Cheers to the only natty thing we can take. Oh, why does, mm, 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 why does that shit never get better? Today I wanted to try something a bit different. So instead of giving you another workout montage, I want to take you step by step through my workout. So as I've mentioned before, anytime I have a push day, I like to start with rear delts. This gets blood flowing in the shoulders as well as getting me ready for my bigger lifts. Today's main focus is all about the shoulders and triceps. Even though chest wasn't part of the plan today, I couldn't help it but having to squeeze in at least one chest exercise because I sure need it. Moving on to the medial delts, this chest supported lateral raise is great for minimizing momentum and any rocking, allowing me to go lighter and truly focus on my control of the movement. One thing I want you to notice is almost during my full workout, I incorporate lots of two to three second negatives in my training. As you can see in the shoulder press, my main focus is time under tension and by pressing my back on the bench as well as placing my elbows in a 45 degree, this allows me to solely focus on my front delts. You know I got it. Fuck with me, you know I got it. 
Next up is brand new to me because honestly, I can't stop doing them. The beauty about these is that it creates the most amount of tension at the start of the movement compared to doing dumbbell lateral raises which peak at the top of the exercise. If you don't want to be the guy that takes up the whole machine, I understand. But if you have the chance to try these out, I think you'd love it. Now that we hit all parts of the shoulder, it's time to finish with some triceps. I prefer lots of cable extensions because it puts less pressure on my elbows which tend to flare up a bit when I bring out the dumbbells. I like to add overhead cable extensions because it really adds a nice stretch with the most amount of tension at the bottom of the exercise. Lastly, I love double rope or dual cable extensions because it allows me to get full range of motion by driving my fist past my body compared to using a single rope. Hope you guys enjoyed. Fuck with me, you know I got it. Fuck with me, you know I got it. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for my favorite meal of the day. So while everything is cooking, let's quickly talk about this giveaway. I'm pretty sure most of you are only here for the giveaway. So listen up. If you watched my previous full day of eating video, I talked about soon giving away a brand new air fryer. In fact, the same one that I have. I believe it's one of the best investments you can make, especially when you're trying to cook in bulk and you're just trying to make life easy when it comes to making your foods and meal prepping, etc. All right, so all you have to do is like the video, why haven't you done it yet? Subscribe to the channel, and then comment down below, gee, you're my favorite YouTuber. I'm just kidding. But what I do want you to comment is, I'm here for the air fryer. Sounds pretty douchey that you're literally only here for the air fryer, like you don't even care about this video, but it's okay. So seriously, like, comment, subscribe. That's all you have to do. I wish all of you luck. Let the games begin. I hope you win. Oh right, and on the 24th, which is exactly a week from today, I will come back to this video, look at all the comments, and pick a winner. So feel free to comment anything else additional to, I'm only here for the air fryer. Tell me. Ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not, it is currently 5.45. As you can see, the sun is going down, but that is a struggle of a YouTuber trying to film everything by himself, trying to get all these cool angles for you all. So I hope you're enjoying this video. But we have some chicken, rice, and beans, which is what I usually have almost every single day post-workout. We got some potatoes, which I make like every other day, but they're as easy as putting them in the air fryer for 30 minutes at 400. Trust me, add the ranch dressing, just trust me on it. Add some garlic, some salt, and some parsley have some ketchup and I can guarantee you that they're way better than any other fast food potato. Two quick things I wanna talk about before we move on is, especially if you're new to tracking, I like to weigh my meats, my rice, my potatoes. I like to weigh them raw just because you're gonna get more of an accurate reading when you plug that into my fitness pal compared to when you weigh them cooked. Now there's nothing wrong with that, but again, it's just more accurate. But just make sure that when you plug that into my fitness pal, you differentiate from cooked to raw. And then secondly, I still use oils. I'm still cooking with my oils, especially with my meats. So I'm still consuming fats. Keep in mind, I'm still having 3000 calories. So I still have a good amount of fats to play around with. I usually save them more for my dessert. But as I get deeper into the prep and my fats start to go down, my calories start to go down, I go more towards the cooking spray, just like I do for my breakfast. So that's going to be all. I'm going to get ready to dive into this and I'll probably go out for a walk as I got to walk my dog. And I'm going to use that as some extra steps. So I swear you can't go wrong with these potatoes. So I really hope you win this air fryer. I do. I really do. To anyone that is lactose and gluten intolerant, this one's for you. Dear lactose and gluten, you can take away my oats, you can take away my milk, you can take away my cinnamon toast crunch, you can take away my cheese, oh do I love cheese. But you know what you can't take away? My motherfucking pasta, bitch. Gluten free. If you don't think with 400 grams of carbs every day, I'm not gonna have a plate of pasta, you are mistaken. I have three servings of this gluten free pasta every single day. It's funny because I feel like this is an ad, but it's not an ad. Two chicken sausages and a serving and a half of tomato and basil sauce. Now, yes, as I get deeper and closer into my prep, I will obviously have to substitute the pasta for something that has a little bit more volume. But until then, we're gonna ride the pasta wave for as long as we can while we get shredded. Now, as I was saying earlier through my aggression, sometimes things like this happen. 
What's important is that you don't give up, you work around it, and you keep moving forward. Honestly, ever since being gluten and lactose free, I've been exploring and learning new foods and new choices that I can have. And speaking of lactose free, have you tried the Fairlife chocolate milk? Number one, this is way better than Nesquik. Knock that out of the park. Number two, it has 13 grams of protein per cup. And number three, it's lactose motherfucking free. So I have at least one to one and a half cups every single night for dessert, as well as 50 to 60 grams of peanut butter. Like I said, this is where most of my fats come from. So. That's it for today, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. I am here for the motherfucking air fryer for a chance to win a brand new Ninja air fryer on me. I hope you win. I love you guys, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace, baby.